The Markland Wood Homeowners Association has been regarded by many as having a strong community spirit and as being one of the most active and well-organized citizen committees in Etobicoke. No heritage plaque is complete in its isolation. Simply put, this plaque could not have been completed without the support of the Markland Wood Homeowners Association. Built on volunteers, this organization no doubt inspires their community through their work. I would like to invite Bob Cook on the Board of Directors to say a few words to you. Thank you, Mark. It's really gratifying to see so many people out here on the proverbial dark and stormy night at Major Way here. That's quite gratifying. We're here to celebrate our common roots, and it's uh, particularly gratifying that so, members of the, so many members of the Silverthorne family are, are here. Um, it makes it that, just that much more meaningful. Uh, I believe that all Mark Landers, past, present, and future, should be grateful that an organization such as Heritage Toronto exists. The City of Toronto has gone from 200-foot-tall pine trees to 200-foot-tall condominiums in less than 200 years. And there's not many places in the entire planet that have seen so much change in such a relatively brief amount of time. With over 100 construction cranes between the Rouge River and the Etobicoke Creek, we need to recognize, cherish, and preserve our heritage now more than ever before. Heritage Toronto was quick to recognize that the legacy of the Silverthorne family needed a visible and permanent place at the center of our community. We should also be grateful that an organization such as the Mark Van Wood Homeowners Association continues to build on its track record, now at 50 years and counting, of making Mark Van Wood simply the best neighborhood in all of Toronto. When presented with the plaque concept, the association supported it every step of the way. Now these plaques, as you're about to see, are very well made, and Heritage Toronto provides perpetual care, so they cost a pretty penny. Funding from the community is rightfully required, and I'm happy to say the association is picking up the entire cost of this plaque, even though it's a significant portion of, of a full year's operating budget. This is this is really a significant decision that the association has taken. They realize that an opportunity like this comes along infrequently, and 200 years after the start of the War of 1812 seemed just right given that the Silverthorns participated in that war. Now, I expect the good people at Heritage Toronto have heard from numerous citizens somewhat like me, the ones who have lived in an area for years, going back to their childhood, without a single thought about its history, and then somehow discovered it and I'm no exception. Our family moved into Bloorerdale, which is a small subdivision about 1,200 miles off to the east, right near Highway 27, in 1954. And I soon discovered that Silverthorn Forest, the one that's uh, 80 or so hectares. And by the by, uh, hectares and acres, uh, they have to do everything now in metric. But actually, the farm is about 400 acres. So when you, when you hear how many hectares it was, it doesn't mean much to most of us. But it was a significant size farm of about 400 acres. So I'm, I'm one of those folks that lived nearby and didn't really appreciate the history of the area. I guess I came and visited the forest often. And, and those were the days when parents would let their kids take off in some vague general direction with, with only the slightest idea of what they were going to do for the day. Uh, and in 1961, we moved to Mill Road on the east side. So we were one of, the, one of the first folks to move in. The west side of Mill Road would remain solid forest for another six or seven years. In fact, I remember my kid's sister going out there, literally getting lost. So here in the 1960s, you could get lost in a forest in the city of Toronto. Now the name Mill Road meant absolutely nothing to me as a teenager Except possibly I thought, oh, what a name for the designer of our modern subdivision to, to pick. It sounds actually pretty phony to me. And little did I realize later, until later, that it was called Mill Road because a real saw and grist mill had been built next to the Tobacco Creek in 1811, and a real mill road was put in for the lumberjacks and the farmers. And later I went to, to um, high school on Mill Road, Silverthorne Collegiate, 
starting in 1965, which was its very first year. And again, I said, Silverthorne Collegiate, well, that's a nice sounding name for the people at the school board to have dreamed up, but it sounded pretty phony to me. And then later, in my young adult years, I realized there was a real John Silverthorne who had owned the 400 acres where I grew up and was in fact the builder, owner, and operator of that mill. So this connection was kind of an aha moment when I realized a lot had gone on in the fields and the forests that I frequented as a kid. So as a very amateur local story, historian, I dug a little further into this Silverthorne family and found out that three of John's sons had fought on the British side in the War of 1812, that his great-grandson, Charles, had been Reeve of Etobicoke, which is similar to being the mayor these days, and that the Silverthorns lived continuously in this area until 1958. So now here we are in the year 2012 with so much to celebrate. I was personally delighted to learn that the permanent home of the plaque will be the southwest corner of Bloor and Mill. And as anybody who lives here knows, that's right next to where the McDonald's is. So it pleases me no end to think that thanks to this plaque, the kids that hang around that McDonald's will realize that logs from Bergen Forest were hauled down that road just a few meters from where they sit, texting and eating a Big Mac. <laughs> you can only hope that this plaque will help speed these kids along to their own aha moment to appreciate all the significant contributions made by the Silverthorne family. Thank you all so much for your support today. This is the Silverthorne family and uh, mill farm historical plaque. Uh, this was uh, just recently introduced to the Markland uh, Wood area and uh, we're quite proud of this. It uh, shows over 200 years of history for the area. Now here we are outside of Bob Cook's house. He's one of the directors of the Markland Homes Association and our resident historian. Now earlier I went and uh, videotaped the plaque over at the uh, uh, Markland Wood Plaza and I was just wondering if you could say a couple of words. The community really rallied behind the directors when they made the decision to, to spend a fair bit of their budget this year to have a historical plaque put on the corner of Bloor and Mill in honor of the Silverthorne family and the Mill farm. It's a plaque that uh, generations of Marklanders, especially the kids that sit in McDonald's and eat Big Macs and text and that sort of thing, will look over occasionally and realize that Mill Road is called Mill Road because there really was a saw and grist mill built there in 1811. Well, thank you very much, Bob, and Merry Christmas to you. Thanks very much, Tom. All the best to you and all the best to all the Marklanders. Merry Christmas.